and welcome back to the NWA 1983 Project. I'm your host, Juan Cena, and with me, as always, is Matt Riley. How are you doing tonight, Matt? Oh, I'm sneezy. And is it still 1983? Yes, we're still in 1983. God, God damn. We had that hiatus. <laughs> That's true. We're technically in around August of 83 right now. The year that we not end. <laughs> Sorry. I love it. On tonight's program, uh, we will have a tournament for the NWA Southern Tag Team Championship. If you watched our last program, the Road Warriors had defeated King Kong Bundy and Rick Rude to win the NWA Television Tag Team Championship. And due to the rules of the NWA, you cannot hold two tag team championships simultaneously, so the Southern Championship was vacated. In the tournament, we have the Rock and Roll Express, the Zambui Express, Austin Idol, and Coco Beware. <laughs> Wait, the Zambui Express is Austin Idol and Coco Beware? No. No, it's the Rock and Roll Express, the Zambui Express, Coco Beware, and Austin Idol. Fabulous ones. Who are the Zambui Express? Kareem Muhammad? Ray Candy? Two big black guys wearing military outfits? That works. They worked in Florida mostly? Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> so on this program, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, the recent demise of Bobby the Brain Heenan. Uh, racism and wrestling. Matt's new favorite wrestler, the progressive liberal. <laughs> Starcade coming this November. So I think we should start out with our favorite memories of Bobby the Brain Heenan. So what are some of your favorite memories of Bobby the Brain? <laughs> uh, my favorite m- memories of Bobby was when he would blatantly lie about something that happened. Probably my favorite was Rocker's heel turn. And at the end, he was like, Mario Gennetti threw himself out of the window trying to get away. <laughs> it just was so stupid, but it was, it was funny. Kennedy tried to dive through the window to escape. Did you see that? Are you blind? What an act of cowardice. Mm, mm, oh, mm. Get some help over here, will ya? Steve's hit great timing. You can watch a lot of the spoofs, but I think one of the big things he's underestimated for is the way he could prom- like cut a promo to build up a match and why he hated someone and why he wanted them to lose and just the visceral hatred. You know, it's like, oh, man, he wants that guy to die. I vividly recall the signing of the contract for your title shot at Hulk Hogan in WrestleMania 3. You said you taught Hogan a lot, but you had still one more lesson to give him in the final chapter in that big title match at the Silver Dome in Pontiac on the 29th. You want to talk to somebody? You talk to me. He's going to do all his talking in the ring. You talk to me. You want to talk about the final chapter? I'll be glad to talk about the final chapter. The final chapter in the life and history and career of Hulk Hogan. See, because it's over, Hogan. I know it. You know it. Everybody knows it. You had three good years. You can't laugh at that. You were lucky. You made some money. You got a cartoon. You got some dolls. You rode good. You had it good. But you know you can't beat this man. Toughest man in the world. Nobody can beat this man. You think with all that blonde hair and a bunch of little hulksters out there and behind you, you ripping that t-shirt off and shaking in your pythons, you think you can beat him, dummy? It can't be done by you, ten guys like you, or a hundred people like you. This is the next heavyweight champion of the world. Get ready to swallow it, Hogan. It's all over. Andre, what about that, that final lesson? You don't understand, do Wait you, dummy? I do the I'll talking. I'll conduct these interviews here if you don't mind. Oh, maybe I will conduct them. How do you like that? He always felt bad because he was always losing. He always you know, lost to Hogan, lost to whoever. I enjoyed his work immensely. I think a lot of people did. And you know, It always makes you wonder why with so many wrestlers these days that do not cut good or even okay promos. There, there are guys out there that can, can talk. Absolutely. Are they thinking to themselves, well, we'd rather save ourselves a few thousand dollars a year instead of saying we could make tens of thousands more by, you know, having somebody out help sell the match and sell it to the fans. For me, I think it's a tale of two different Bobbies. We have Bobby Heenan, the manager, who would cut these money promos that were completely awesome. 
Are you fans in this area well aware of the fact that a young man from down in neighboring Milwaukee, a very impressive athlete in the Olympics, I'm talking about Laurent Susi, Bobby Heenan, you've got a big smile on your face tonight. Impressive in the Olympics. Who cares about watching a bunch of children wrestle? Who cares about the Olympics? Oh, it's a great thing for the country, but who cares about Laurent the Sissy? That's his name? Laurent Susi. Can you, you imagine? Know that. Nine months they had to come up with another name, and that's the best they could do. Laurent. That's the most important thing they could come up with in nine months. Shows you the mentality of his parents. Of course, he went to the University of Wisconsin, right? In Madison. Don't, don't take a whole lot to get in there. I guess you have to be able to, the entrance exam, you have to be able to write your name in three different colors of crayon. I could care less your wrestling ability. I could care about your amateur background. You're in the ring now with a professional. I'm going to go behind that man so much, he's going to think he's stuck in a revolving door. I'm going to take him down, take him around, show him the town. I'm going to reverse neck snap his neck. I'm going to dislocate both his shoulders. Then I might just paintbrush him until my hands are swollen shut. But another good news for you and everybody else. I have signed. I went to Japan in July. I was there the whole month. Aware of that? I'm not aware of what you're aware of. I'm aware of my business. I went to Japan in July, and I signed the most lucrative contract for Nick Bockwinkle in the history of professional wrestling for any world champion. He's going to defend his title in Germany. And he's going to defend his title in Japan, and I pulled it off. That's why I'm manager of the year four times in a row. And high flyers, you can run, but there's no place to hide. You're running, like, you're running now like rats. The water level's coming up to your bellies, and you've got no place to hide. And then we have the comedic commentary of Bobby Heenan. I remember when I was champion, Monsoon. Champion of what? My neighborhood. Oh. I had the prettiest date whole block that month. Oh, you should have seen her. The only gold you ever had was in your teeth. How many gold in my teeth? I think I have Japanese. And I always felt like they were two different guys almost because when Bobby was cutting a promo like on Hogan, it was it was intense and it's like, no, this time I'm going to get him. This time I'm going to get him. Big poster here. Hulk rules. You know what this should say? Hulk's a fool. That's what that should say. I'm telling you. And then he would never get him, and then he'd be so mad that he didn't get him, and then <laughs> Lee Hogan would beat him up after the match for no reason. Yeah. Seemingly. <laughs> uh, but Bobby took great bumps, too. I think he was probably the best bumper of all of the managers and probably in history. The one where Ken Patera went across the ring and broke his neck? Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. That may have actually been legit, but, you know, still it was good. Like some of those turnbuckle bumps, like Hogan would slam him into the cage. And I, th I believe... I believe he was the only manager to have a match at WrestleMania. Actually, he had two matches at WrestleMania. Who do you have? Um, he, he, had, was, he was in a six-man tag with the Islanders. He was in a, he was in a six-man match with the Islanders versus Coco Beware and the British Bulldogs. That's when Bobby had the dog catcher outfit on. Yeah. And he actually <laughs> pins Coco in that match and wins. <laughs> And then at WrestleMania five, he fought the Red Rooster and lost in 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. So I believe he's the only manager. No, Fuji had a match at WrestleMania five too. Powers of Pain, three on two, Powers of Pain, and Mr. Fuji versus Demolition. But Fuji was a legitimate wrestler beforehand, so I don't think that really counts. So right. Kudos to Bobby for that. And one of the most interesting things that Bobby ever did was... Now, this is 1989, and he is hosting primetime with Gorilla. And there was a, a period of time, I think for like six months, where Roddy Piper was also hosting primetime, so it was the three of them. Yeah. And it would, be, it would be Bobby and the Gorilla at the desk, and then they would have Piper in an undisclosed location, and then Piper would do shenanigans. And I think this was at a time where it could have went either way for Bobby, because I think he was starting to get a really good reaction, and I think... If he turned face, I don't think anyone would have been mad. Like, I think everyone was like, the crowd was almost turning Bobby. So they needed to do something to get some heat back on Bobby. So Bobby used to cut these fucking vicious fucking promos on Piper, like, all the time. And it eventually led to a piper Rick Rude feud. But there was one during Christmas where Bobby tells the kids, like, like hey, kids that are watching primetime, and he tells them that Santa Claus is not real. You know, I'd like to, if I could spend a minute here, I'd like to talk to the kids out there on Christmas. Please be my guest. Could you get in real close, kids, and, and gather around the old television set? Now, I know you're looking around the house right now, and you're probably still all 
excited about what happened this morning and playing with your games and your toys and your dolls and your trucks. But one thing you got to remember, you don't really think some slob in a red suit came down your when chimney you this morning hey, and gave you gifts, do you? Cut that out. Bobby. Check mom and dad. They're the ones with the cash and the Guinness. Hey, Bob, 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 That's what please. you should think about Bobby, at Christmas. That's enough. Bobby, Bobby. Oh. <laughs> Bobby, let's keep the Christmas spirit. I'll tell you the truth. I, I got kids and Christmas is the most wonderful time of year and let's kind of keep the Christmas That's spirit. That's their fault. Keep your mouth <laughs> shut. What'd you say? Ho, ho, ho. And another thing, kids. Santa can't drink milk. It'd get all over his phony beard. <laughs> Bobby, I think it's going a little too far. Knock it this, off this right now. This is a prime time show. Tis the season to be swerved. Boing. <laughs> Bob. Bob, I There's thought we were going to... There's no Santa. Bob, I think Santa's it's going... Santa's a sham. Knock it off, I said. The That's guy enough. you sit on his lap at the discount store? Hey. Just out of detox. <laughs> hey, you jerk. I think it's about enough. I think it's about enough. We've got a lot of little kids watching the show. There is a Sandy Claus. He left gifts for me this morning. He left gifts for a whole bunch of you little kids out there. Bobby, let's just stop this stuff right now and get on to the next match. I think it's probably the Maybe wisest. Maybe you believe in Santa, but nobody would come in your neighborhood after midnight with gifts, Piper. Because you're a bum like the rest of them. Mister, I'm telling you He's something. He's just a nasty, rotten the individual that he always The smartest and wisest thing will. you could do the camera off him, please. is back Take the off camera now. off him, please. And then Piper goes off. Fake hat. Fake glasses. Fake beard. Fake hair. You see, Santa's just an average guy like me. He's a guy walking the streets. You kids have been swerved by your folks. Take it out on them. Oh, God! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! And by the end of the show, fucking Piper comes out and beats the shit out of Bobby. And then Piper gets, like, thrown off of prime time. Like, he's not allowed on the show anymore. You know, for an eight-year-old, that's fucking heat, man. Like, telling me there's no fucking Santa Claus? Holy shit. Yeah, that's serious business. But that, that Piper that Piper interaction was completely insane. And it was also the interaction with uh, Terry Taylor, when he slaps the shit out of Terry Taylor on prime time. You know, I want to make a statement here. I've taken my glasses off. I realize there's going to be no violence now. He's Definitely content with not. getting away with what he got away with. But, you know, I was, thinking, I was thinking something. Maybe I acted a little too hastily. Maybe I talked to you like I shouldn't have talked to you. Maybe you didn't need somebody shoving you around talking to you like you were a piece of garbage. Maybe you needed a pat on the back. That's how you treated everybody. Well, some people react differently to a pat oh, on the yes. back than a kick in the can. Okay, I was wrong, maybe. I'm a big enough man You were to... wrong? You said it came out... Wrong. You, it came out of your mouth. You I said admit you... it on national television. I'm a human being. I made a mistake. Well, how about you're going to be here? Then, like I suggested, and you keep on. harping on me. Fine. You go your way. I'll go mine. I was wrong. I apologize. Oh, how about Drop a handshake? Great. You're asking for a lot now. Well, there's an apology and a handshake. Uh, you two gentlemen. I think that uh, it's only fitting. Okay, that... it's over then. Oh yeah. I it's hope it's so. over. Yes, sir. I like this for good. You. Like I'm through with you, you're through with me. Yes. I right. made a mistake. Sounds good to me. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Not very often he apologizes. Okay. Guaranteed. Forget it. Okay? Oh, what? Why are you doing that? I'm doing nothing. Why, why, why would you do that? Come on, Marty. Get him. Get him. Choke him. Choke him. Pull him out for there. Choke him. Choke him. Choke him. Brooklyn Brawler comes out and fucking whacks Terry with the fucking chair, and then whacks Gorilla with the chair. Yes. <laughs> she was in a, in a more. Uh, was it WCW where Pillman grabbed him or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he cursed. On the outside, almost in our lap here, and Eddie. Wait a minute! Wait. Easy. Easy. What the fuck are you doing? Easy.
<laughs> oh, that's great. Bobby's definitely the the best manager of all time. Period. Um, I don't think there's any doubt of that. His, you know, commentary. I understand for a lot of people, it's not for everyone, but I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought he was better. Funny. I thought he was better with McMahon than he was with Gorilla. Really? Yeah. Like commentary wise, like primetime is different because they didn't do commentary together. They just interacted and had fun. But I think if you watch some of the pay per views, you know, watch the TVs, watch superstars, and I think you get a better feeling for it than watching the pay per views. But yeah, Bobby was super amazing. I know his health has been in decline for for a couple of years at this point, and it's definitely sad to see him go. Yeah. Now, one last thing I want to bring up about Bobby is that a lot of people say that he gave away the finish at the Bash of the Beast '96 when Hogan turned. Hulkamania! Hulk Hogan is here! Hulk Hogan's here! Hulk Hogan is in the building! You damn right he is! Go get him, Hulkster! Yeah, but whose side is he on? Go, what are you talking about? Whose side is he on? What are you talking about? Yeah. I don't think that's the case at all. For those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know, Outsiders, so it was, Ho- uh, it was Nash and Hall taking on Sting, Macho, and Luger. Luger gets taken out. They fucking shut him out. They're brawling. Hogan comes out. And then... Heenan says, well, whose side is he on? And and, and kind of flustered Dusty. Like, Dusty's like, what, what? But as a kid watching that, and I watched that live, I thought it was just Bobby lying to me again because Bobby said crazy shit like that all the time. So why would I believe Bobby Heenan? Yeah. And if if Heenan didn't react that way, that would have gave away the finish. Right. He said shit about Hogan all the fucking time. See, it would have worked if, 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 you know, in theory, it would have been better if he just went, what do you mean, my Senator? Of course he's here to save the day. Shut up, Bobby. You know? Yeah. Well, they didn't tell the announcers to finish, so that was one of the issues, too. So they didn't know. But yeah, if, if Sir Shivani would have went like, shut up, Bobby, what are you talking about? Which I think he did, sort of, but I don't think they would really emphasize on that. So, And it's funny, because at the end of the day, all that shit Bobby talked about Hogan for fucking 10 years, He was at the end of the day, he was right. Uh, especially when Hogan turned. And it's funny, when Hogan turned heel... Bobby would still root for the heels, except for Hogan. <laughs> and I think it made an instant dynamic. It's like I don't care if this guy's, a, you know, I don't care if this guy's a, a bad guy now. I still fucking hate this fucking guy. And I think it played really well in this character because again, you put so many years behind it. Having Bobby cheer for Hogan would have been weird. So I agree with that maneuver. Rest in peace, Bobby Heenan. Yeah. We all love you. So on, on that note, I wanted to talk about Starcade this Thanksgiving. Uh, on Thanksgiving, they're running an event at the Greensboro Coliseum. You know, it was already planned out. You know, they have you know they have their live events planned out, you know, you know, way in advance. But out of the blue, they decided to call this show Starcade. <laughs> it's not on pay per view. They're not going to show it on network. It's just a house show. And they just put this, you know, the name Starcade on it. And I guess yeah. maybe they're testing it and see if it would draw more. Again, realize it's on Thanksgiving Day. And Greensboro, again, if you're going to have, I think I mentioned this on the last show, if you're going to have a show on Thanksgiving, it probably should be in Greensboro because they're used to it, I guess. Yeah. Um, it is a tradition down there. So there's, there'll probably be you know less heat there and more people willing to go than, say, like in California or New York. But an interesting note, a couple of weeks ago, they went and kind of, I think they re-upped their trademarks on like, Halloween Havoc and Fall Brawl and Starcade oh, really? to make sure they had those. Interesting that they fucking they you know they did the they did the due diligence and then they fucking named it fucking Starcade. Main event of that show is and this is the most Starcadey match you can get. Jinder Mahal versus Nakamura is your main event. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Jesus! Like you couldn't give me like I don't know something better than that as the main event. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have Charlotte versus Natty in a fucking cage match. Yeah. Which is probably, like, should be the featured bout, to be honest, because it is a flare at Starcade in Greensboro. I'm assuming yeah. we're going to see Flair there. He'll probably end up showing up. I know the Rock and Roll Express and Ricky Steamboat's going to be there, so it's kind of going to be a, a love letter to kind of mid-Atlantic Jimmy Crockett promotions. Let's see if they can get Jimmy Crockett for the show. That'd be awesome. <laughs> He's been more... Like, Jimmy disappeared for 20 years. Like, no one knew yeah. what Jimmy Crockett was, but now he's doing interviews and conventions now. So, you know, we're more likely to see him and maybe David out there and, 
they, David can cut a promo. You, you know, who knows? You can see Cornette down there, maybe. Get him! Get him! <laughs> He's got him by the honker. Whip him! Whip him like a dog. <laughs> but to be honest, if it was me, I would record this. Actually, I would record most house shows. And, and here's why. House show attendance is fucking down. Even the attendance for Raw and for SmackDown are way down. I don't know if you guys seen any of the pictures of SmackDown as of late, but they're moving everyone to the hard camera. Like, it's half full. It looks fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. So, to be honest, let's be honest. If they have a title change on SmackDown or Raw, it's not going to change rating anyway. Like, their ratings are going to be flat regardless. You know, unless you have something ridiculous happen on the show. Like, you bring, like, Steve Austin, you'll get some more eyeballs of The Rock, right? Yeah. But title changes you're not going to see. But people would probably be more apt to go out to a house show if they think it's going to be a title change on a house show. So, right. if it was me, personally, I would not have any more title changes on Raw, unless it was necessary. And start doing... You know, you don't have to do Universal or WWE Championship title changes. But if you want to get some tag team title changes on there, you want to get some IC belt title changes on there, and then what you can do is just tape the fucking title change and put it on the network. So, you know, everyone gets to see this title change, and it's at a house show. Yeah. And now if there's a house show set at the National Coliseum, I might be more apt to go because I might see a title switch. They've done it before when house show attendance was down. They used to do that shit in the fucking 80s, and they've done it in the 90s before. Yeah. Like, this is not anything new. I know they just had a, a U.S. title switch at a house show not too long ago. But they just had to switch back at Raw, so I think that's a better idea. I would actually tape all the house shows because, you know, not for nothing, you do need content for the network. And I'm not saying put a full show on. Just tape the house show like they used to. Make it look like like the MSG shows from fucking 89. Yeah. Like, who cares? If you don't have to, it's just raw and dirty. It's just fucking a house show. It'd be cheap enough to do, and you get more original content if you wanted to do it live like they did with the msg show and the japan show you can do that as well and maybe get some more eyeballs to the network so so matt what do you thought about the uh the rebirth of starcade uh i mean part of me is happy but part of me is like you couldn't have done it in a bigger event like a bigger build up and this sort of like surprise uh, i would say though if they're gonna bring back those old shows it's not a bad thing per se because i mean how many wwe pay-per-views of generic names that you don't yeah. care about. Payback! At least, at least it's a few that, like, you know, Green American Bash, Starcade, Halloween Havoc. Halloween Havoc. Super you know, Brawl. That, have, have some memory to it, you know? Yeah, it'd be fun to see. I, I'm happy the name's coming back, but I can see them doing a Test of Waters type thing and then next year doing it bigger. You know, next year you could it could be a pay-per-view. Maybe they do a pay-per-view live from dance, you know, on Thanksgiving. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. I mean, it, it seems to me that everyone is not, you know, everyone... On social media, at least, it's like super happy that it's back and no one's, you know, killing them. They may be killing them on some of the, the matches that they have and the fact that on the card they spelled Bobby Roode wrong and Ricky Steamboat wrong. But that would be a very WCW type thing to do, to call him Booby Roode and Ricky Steamboat. I thought it was like an indie from the fucking Northeast from the 80s or something. By the way, I looked up some of the pictures of the SmackDown attendance. Bad, right? Not the best. No. Like, that's scary, man. Uh, well, that's the thing, too, is, you know, you, your product has been getting shit on. I mean, like, if you look at the shows right now, there's not a whole hell of a lot going on besides a couple of storylines. Yeah. You know, Ole Anderson was right. So, Can I be on the record and say, fuck Jinder Mahal? Well, fuck that you. shit. Fuck that shit. It's stupid. And they know it's stupid, but they're going to continue to do it to prove that it's not stupid. But it's fucking stupid. It was stupid when it happened. I called it. I told what you guys it was going to suck. Everyone was like, no, this is going to be cool. He Look at him. He's so jacked. Oh, oh it's funny. Shit. It's so funny. And I'm like, you're not going to say it's funny in fucking three months, are you? In three months, you're going to be like, this shit is fucking sucks. Don't yeah. fucking encourage this fucking behavior. It sucks. It's pandering to your lowest common denominator. And it's fucking stupid. Fuck that yeah. shit and fuck that guy. So how do you fix it? Right now? Yeah. Take the belt off and fucking send him away. Like I don't give a put the belt on fucking stale ass cracker, fucking Randy Orton. I don't give a no. shit. I don't give a shit. Fucking take it off of him. I don't care. I, give it the fucking Heath Slater. I don't care. <laughs> I do not give a shit. The what belt needs they... to come off. And it can't go to Nakamura either. Why not? 
It doesn't make any fucking sense. It's not going to draw. Nakamura oh. still hasn't had that big fucking match on a fucking pay-per-view. His match with Jinder was fucking ugly bullshit. He had a pretty good match with fucking Cena, but he never had that, like, that Sami Zayn match that he had at fucking NXT that was fucking amazing. And there's no one for him to feud with. What if you had it? Kevin Owens. Like, what? Um, <laughs> mm. um, yeah, he gets the belt. Cause he, got, he just headbutted Vince McMahon and... You know, he's, well, he's he's above the belt right now because he's feuding with Shane. And the McMahon's right. thing, if you're feuding with one of their guys, that's like feuding with The Undertaker. It's above you know the main event. AJ Styles. I mean, he would be the guy. He's the baby face. And he can go double belt action if he had to. I've always liked that idea of the match where he had both belts in the line. Well, technically, guys. the United States champion is the number one contender. Are we still going by that rule? Yeah. Is that still a rule? Yeah, well, in theory, but... You know, you have that triple threat match, and both guys pin the champion. Yeah. And the two refs give each guy a belt. And no one's done it still. That's my uh, nod to Dusty finish. Because you, you give the guy who expected the world title the U.S. belt. Yeah, I, I think the problem you have is Jinder needs to, He needs legit heat, not just like this shitty heat he's been getting at Nakamura. It's a weird... He called knock- Nakamura Mr. Miyagi? Yeah, it sucks. And then people got mad because it said it was racist? I'm like, Miyagi? shut the fuck up. Number one, Mr. Miyagi was fucking American. He was a well-known racist, too. So, you know. <laughs> was he? <laughs> like, during happy days? <laughs> yeah, I remember he was always like, remember, boys, we only serve whites. Like, oh, my God, Mr. Miyagi. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's, he's the dark fucking side, man. Dark shit on that guy. I'm uh, I'm fucking miserable. <laughs> Ruined childhoods. Well, let's let's go back. Let's. I want to go back and, and touch on this on um, this racist promo that he cut. It's like Jesus fucking Christ, guys. Can we get some heat on some heels? Well, that's the thing. Like, what the see, fuck? He, it just oof. like it wasn't it, a good promo, and the Mister Miyagi joke is fucking stupid. Yes, that's stupid, and it didn't work. But right. to be outraged by it is fucking ridiculous. You're the problem. You're the fucking problem. Yeah, that's the bottom line. Because if you're going to be offended by heels getting heat, then you can't watch wrestling at all. You got to go watch something else. Go, exactly. go, go, go! Commit suicide. I don't care. <laughs> Do something else, but don't watch wrestling because it's not for you. It's like getting mad at the movie because the main villain is a white supremacist. It makes no fucking sense. What's wrong with you? Well, I, I think I've always felt like you know the villains should be. I think the problem with with the people are more accepting to it. So what would happen if you brought out some guy who was supposed to be this mega heel, and the fans start cheering him? That hasn't happened yet. Uh, what about um Healy McKillerson? It didn't happen with the stormtrooper and fucking Smoky Mountain with the Nazi fucking paraphernalia. It never happened with Fritz. And it never. It, it's it. There's always a risk. There's always a risk if you have someone that says "Hail Hitler" and then the fucking crowd goes "Hail Hitler" with them. Yeah. But, it, but I can't. You know, you shouldn't book to something that has never happened. Like we never had a. It would be like Slaughter as the Iraqi sympathizer, and like, oh, everyone says like, "Yeah, it's Saddam Hussein." Like that's it's never happened. It just hasn't. I mean, there's no, there's no, there's no identical evidence of that ever happening, ever where you had someone who, you know. A borderline racist, you know, in terms of a character, would it be Colonel De Beers, who was, you know, a Southern apartheid guy? Like, he was for the apartheid? Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he wanted to paint black wrestlers white? That Folks, that happened. That was real. That's a real he angle. He piled up Jimmy Snook on the concrete. Like, that, you know, that's legitimate. But the crowd in Minneapolis didn't turn on cheer De Beers. It's fucking wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying that couldn't happen in, in, in today's climate. That, that's a very real possibility, but it hasn't happened yet. But I, I think I think you know everyone needs to chillax with that. It's fucking gender. It's fucking that's... Canadian. What if he came out and he was like white power? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> oh, gender, you what? They tried that with Kerwin White. You remember that? No, I don't remember that. Kerwin White was Chavo Guerrero pretending he denounced his Hispanic heritage and he was like, I'm going to be white from here on out. <laughs> Didn't work. It was shitty. Mm. And Dolph Ziggler was his caddy. What was that, 2005? That shit was fucking terrible. Ugh. 
what happened was Eddie died, and they're like, no, we're just gonna make you travel Guerrero again because this is stupid. Wow. I mean, it can't be worse than the Mexicools coming out of lawnmowers. Lawnmowers, yeah. yeah. What was he called? Kerwin White. <laughs> At least it pops up quick on Google. Oh, oh, oh my God! Yeah. Oh, and there's there's Dolphus's. Yeah, Caddy. Nick, ay ay ay. So uh, in terms, of, let's not be outraged by by shenanigans. Don't be outraged by heel promos. Don't be don't be outraged because Kevin Owens made a kid cry ringside. Like you just you can't watch wrestling. I'm sorry. It's just it's not for you. Go watch. Happy days. You guys have to get heat, and if you can't, if you take these things away from them, they're not gonna have heat. You know, even though it's cheap, but that's the if that's the best they can get, I'd rather cheap heat than no heat, right? God. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's like going to the town, and being like, "Oh, you people, you know, what are you doing here?" Oh, we're in Cleveland, Ohio, and if America needed an animal, we're gonna stick the nozzle right here in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> It's like it's it's ridiculous. So Starcade, Thanksgiving night. I hope they do well. I'm glad the Rock and Roll Express is going to be there. Really, they, they can still work. I saw Ricky Morton do a Hernan Corona like two weeks ago. So, <laughs> yeah, you're at Walmart. <laughs> it was Walmart. Although everyone in Walmart has Walmart has Ricky Morton's haircut. So, are you Ricky Morton? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Matter of fact, I am. Robert Gibson runs up and double drop kicks him. With, with his one eye? <laughs> What's wrong with him? He's a straight uh, eye. Give the guy a break, uh, will you? What the fuck's up with Shawn Michaels' fucking eye? Like, he's a fucking millionaire. He can't fix that shit? No, nah, you can't fix that. Fix your fucking... Yes, you can. Wear an eye patch, motherfucker. Do something. <laughs> if Magic Johnson could beat AIDS, he can beat that fucking eye fucking disease that he has. I'm just saying. Fuck, he looks ugly now. He's not Ooh. sexy at all. Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Shawn Michaels' eyes crossed. Oh, no. It's fucked up. He's not sexy. He looks gross. If you saw him in the street, you might confuse him with a homeless man. I remember that Rob Van Dam promo where he made fun of Shawn yeah. Michaels' eyes. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, fucking a sexy boy my fucking ass. Why didn't he fucking change that music? Like, why was he still coming out to that in 1998? Why wouldn't he? Do you don't think he needed new fucking music? He's a sexy boy. In 1998, he wasn't? He's, he's not your boy toy, okay? He's just a sexy boy. Why was he wearing leather chaps? Well, who doesn't really? Uh, me and Swanson, I think, have a whole 30-minute segment on how weird Shawn Michaels' outfit was in 19-fucking-92. He looks fucking ridiculous. Like... That's how good he was in the ring because what he was wearing was the drizzling jits. He had like the, the the fingerless gloves with the fucking tights with the hearts on it. He has the fucking glasses with the fucking sights on it. He has his vest with the fucking chain. And he has fucking leather chaps on. What the fuck was that? He's a, he's a heel. He's supposed to be ridiculous looking. What the fuck? Like what is that? What are you trying to be? What he's is that? He's a dick. He's just he thinks he's I, cute. He I know he's sexy. <laughs> He's got the looks that drive girls wild. I mean, he's got moves that really move them. Who fucking wrote that intro for him, too? Like, really? The best you can do? Probably Jimmy Hart, but... I knew a lot of sexy boys, like, in 1995, and none of them looked like Shawn Michaels. <laughs> let's, let's leave that part of your past in the dark. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> dude, I'll leave that one alone. It should be a standalone quote from this show. I knew a lot of sexy boys in the 90s. Oh, boy. Ugh, ridiculous, ridiculous. Well, I will say that I, I always enjoyed his work until he got kind of like, you know, lost his smile, and you can tell he didn't give a shit anymore. But you don't like whole, the work. You don't like the work in the summers. I, I didn't like the uh, the God thing. That was boring and shit to me. Ah, uh, just bad taste. I I didn't care about that. It was just boring. I was like, come on. Like, you're gonna make it really, really just go really go all the way. Well, like, that's the thing. If you're gonna do that, you have to go all the way. You can't. Here's your partner. Jesus Christ has returned. If RVD walk out. <laughs> CM Punk. CM Punk. What if What if Shawn Michaels came up? It's like, I was a boy toy. They touched me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I do love the video of him super kicking the mascot from the Spurs, though. Yeah. That is a good. I mean, yeah, that should happen more often. 
Like, just how the wrestlers come in and, like, do their finish. They the do. Finish. Fucking Scott Steiner ripped someone some poor mascot's head off the other day. Oh, really? It's fucking Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner, I wouldn't trust him to make a sandwich for me. That guy's... He owns, like, restaurants and shit in Atlanta. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, there's this... I don't know if you've seen it online, but... So, apparently, there was, like, a car accident or something. Like, by one of his, like, chain restaurants that he owns. And he was a witness. And the reporter doesn't know who he is. And it's like, oh, sir... Uh, you were witness to this accident, and it's fucking Scott Steiner. <laughs> they really? interviewed him live on the news. I have I have the mascot attack here. Yeah, I think it's. He was with Buff Bagwell apparently too. Oh, he was in Pittsburgh. That's where he was. So Pittsburgh, of course, home of oh the pierogi. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah, the pierogi gave another guy uh, and then Steiner copped him from when he was <laughs> with the clothesline. That's that's terrific. Yeah. That's I don't understand why Scott Steiner is not working on television right this second. Well, is it because he's a fucking insane maniac? or That's a work, man. Come on. It's like Brian Pillman. He's probably like a sweetheart, too. Was he an attempted murder witness? Uh, yeah, a couple times. Was that uh, was that interview with a car accident, like, recently? Yeah, this year. Or last year. Oh. It's like, you're fat! He's fat! <laughs> Samoa Joe, you're fat. Fat asses all night long because you got some fat asses. I don't respect you. It's Samoa Joe. <laughs> That's a real <laughs> promo he cut. And I was just he's like, you're lard ass. And like, oh, the heat. You only have a 33 and six thirds chance of defeating me. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Small Joe and you can see that statement is not true. See, normally if you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestler, you got a 50-50 chance of winning. But I'm a genetic freak, and I'm not normal. So you got a 25% at best at beating me. And then you add Kurt Angle to the mix, your chances of winning drastically go down. See, the three-way at sacrifice, you got a 33 and a third chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 and two-thirds chance of winning because Kurt Angle knows he can't beat me, and he's not even going to try. So, small Joe, you take your 33 and a third chance, minus my 25% chance, and you got an 8 and a third chance of winning at sacrifice. But then you take my 75% chance of winning, if we used to go one-on-one, -on -one, and then add 66 and two-thirds percents, I got 141 and two-thirds chance of winning at sacrifice. See, Joe, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you at sacrifice. <laughs> what? You never seen that promo? No. Ah, uh, you gotta watch more old TNA. And it's because it's Scott Steiner. It's ridiculous, but it makes all the sense in the world. Because it's Scott Steiner. <laughs> oh. uh, do you remember we tried to rape Seventh Man? But the crazy thing is, I can see it in your eyes. You have that need. You have that want. You want to know what it's like to be with a real man. You want to experience the ultimate thriller. You want me, Freakzilla. Okay, wait, 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 hang on a second. <laughs> Scott, I really don't think that this is the time or place for me to make good on any promises. And I'm sorry if you misunderstood me a little bit last week, but what I was really offering you was more like a uh, signing bonus. Because all you have to do is sign on the dotted line and then we can seal the deal. Because all these... Whoa! Whoa! Oh. Oh. Why wait? My freaks are watching. What do you mean? They like watching. <laughs> right there's the video camera. Oh. Let's make our own home movie. Yeah, that's probably why he's not back. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good safe bet right there. You can still do a Frankensteiner. See him do one last week. Was he helping Ricky Morton in the produce department? No. <laughs> Poor Ricky Morton. I, I will tell you a fun Ricky Morton story real quick. A friend of mine loved Rock and Roll Express. Yeah. And he, like, he just loved him. So what he hated, though, was how 
NWA wrestling would always end their shows early. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever. We're out of time. We'll keep the cameras rolling. We'll yeah. see you next week. So, there was this big six minute match with like Dusty and the Rock and Roll Express versus like, I think it was the Horseman. Yeah, that sounds right. And it's like, they're, you know, here it is. No, 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 no. We're out of time. We're going to go. So you, they didn't even start the match? Yeah, they were coming to the ring. Like, they're like, oh, <laughs> they're like, they're like walking through the crowd. And like for the longest time, I would just make that noise. Like, no, 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 no. Shut up, man. Shut up. I hate that shit. <laughs> so eventually I found their theme on, online. So I sent it to him in an email. <laughs> I was like, dude, I cut, her, I cut her a song promo. Listen to how it sounds. Let me know. <laughs> He's like, that was, that was bullshit, man. I was pissed the rest of the day at work. I mean, at least that makes sense in terms of wrestling because, you know, if you have a, if you have, like, say, an hour time slot and you don't know when the matches are going to end, supposedly, then why would they ever end on time? Well, that's the thing that always gets me. Everybody every would be like, oh, my God, this main event. It's Kevin Owens versus Hulk Hogan. It was like some ridiculous main event. And it always ends exactly at 11.05. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd be more impressed if they didn't do that, actually. Like, oh, we're out of time. If you were here live, you'd see the ending. Yeah. You've got to come to the show, folks. That's not a bad, that's not a bad idea. I mean, I, people would be pissed, I guess, but we've seen those matches 36,000 times anyway. Right. Like, there's no fresh matchups. And that's why, like, the best things on the network right now and the things that are doing the most views are the when they had the Cruiserweight Classic and they had the UK Tournament and they had the May Young Classic. Because those are all fresh matchups with people we've never seen before. Yeah, you know, some of them we've heard of. Some of them have a lot of hype, but those things are doing monster numbers on the network um, because they're basically unknown people, and it's all fresh matches. And they should do more of those. Um, unfortunately, Vince hates tournaments. Apparently, he hates yeah, tournaments he's are dick. boring. He hates that. tournaments and tag team wrestling. Yeah, so, he, he's he's. Helped the business as much as he's heard it. You know, it's just like well, it's fifty fifty. I mean, he's helped himself quite a bit. Everyone else, not so much. Even he's done some devilish shit, like stuff that like your most corrupt businessmen wouldn't fucking do. So look, let, let, let's put this in perspective. So Vince he acquires Hulk Hogan, Jesse Ventura, Mean Gene Okerlund, goes into Minneapolis, steals their fucking time slot for TV, yeah. runs their building. And your main event is Hulk Hogan tag teaming with Mean Gene Okerlund taking on Mr. Fuji and George Animal Steel. Yeah. It's like you're literally taking, you're going into the territory, taking their best talent, running their shows in their buildings. And that's yeah. it's like even more fucked up. Check this out. So everyone knows Black Saturday, right? This is when Vince bought Georgia Championship Wrestling and it's Vince McMahon, live from WCW. Yeah. Everyone's seen that, right? That's pretty well known. But think of the ramifications on that. Say you're, you know, it's 1984 uh, when that happened. Literally, what Vince is trying to do is pass off his product as the product that you've been watching for the last six or seven years. Yeah. That's, that's ruthless shit. He did the same thing in St. Louis. Everyone knows about the WCW one or the Georgia Championship Wrestling one. What people don't know that he went into fucking St. Louis and started doing wrestling at the chase. <laughs> what? WWF wrestling at the chase? That's insane. That was, a, that was a staple NWA fucking product. He did the same exact thing when he went to Maple Leaf Wrestling. They didn't call it no more fucking WWF. They called it Maple Leaf Wrestling. They fooled the people there. They oh, it's just Maple Leaf Wrestling. Like, that's ruthless fucking shit. It worked. And he got what he wanted out of it, but that's some, like ruthless. Imagine like, imagine you have you have Walmart, and you know they're feuding with Target, and they want to put Target out of business. So Walmart goes across the street from Target, doesn't call themselves Walmart, and they call themselves Target. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's that's ruthless shit. And then they go in and take all the the best cashiers, the best managers, best stock people. Ricky Maybe Morton, the greeter. Ricky Morton as the greeter. Tony Giovanni at the Starbucks being a Bartista. And they take they take all the, all the good product, all the good, you know, all the good workers, and they put fucking Target out of business. Why don't we have ruthless. a video? Why don't we have a video of Tony Giovanni running out of things left and right? 
<laughs> oh, here's your comment. I'm sorry. sorry. You know, he does. Like, he has a podcast now. I don't know if you listen to his podcast, which is the most amazing podcast on the face of the earth. Um, because he's a pervert. Really? And it's awesome. And totally. yeah, you gotta listen to it. And sometimes his wife comes on and yells at him, which is hilarious. <laughs> and he goes like, "She's just don't worry, she's just drunk. She'll pass out too." <laughs> like he's like he comes off like such a like it's a, he's playing it up, but he comes yeah. off like such a degenerate. But every time he ends the show, he says, "Oh, we're out of time. We gotta he, go." He does the whole shtick, and sometimes he does commentary. He does funny commentary. So he will do like matches they need a commentary on, but like <laughs> pissed like like what he would really say. Yeah, you know, this match sucks. Fucking look at this fucking luchador. He fucking sucks dick. <laughs> Ray Mysterio's a handsome boy. <laughs> Ray Mysterio. Oh, he's obsessed with giant boobs too. So you'll be a fan. Oh, good for him. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, yeah. So everyone, check out the Tony Giovanni podcast because it is fantabulous. So I guess, uh, in the most serious notes. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about racism and wrestling. Uh, yes. This will be the third time we're talking about it on this show. So, yes. Um, so, Matt, uh, racism and wrestling? Ooh. Yes. Why isn't there more of it? <laughs> I, it sells. If you had a heel who you really hated, I think I think what they do is when they worry about what a heel says, like when uh, I'm sure people complained about Junior Mahal's comments. Yeah. That's um, that's inappropriate. Yeah, he's an a-hole. He's supposed yeah. to be. A, your job as a heel is to make people want to pay money to see you get your ass kicked. That's the job. And if you don't do it well, people aren't going to want to come out and see you. So I think to a degree you can play off it still. I mean, obviously it's more about the heel wrestler than the wrestler. So for example, I have no problem if they have a wrestler come out and mock a wrestler uh, in a racial manner, because if that's part of their character, they're they're playing an a-hole character. Mm-hmm. I have a problem with them bringing out a character who is completely a racial stereotype. Well, this is such a that's such a that's such a staple of wrestling. It's been around forever. I mean, there's been good and there've been bad ones. Like oh. Tatanka, pro- probably not. You know, it's a stereotype, but he's legitimate lumpy Indian, legitimate yeah. warrior. So that's not much of a racial stereotype, but a Chief J Strongbow, who's like Italian, and he's not even like at all Native American, yeah. and that's an issue. But Wahoo McDaniel, now Wahoo McDaniel is always the exception to the rule because Wahoo McDaniel was a wrestler who just happened to be Native American. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean he wore the, the we wore like the the headdress and stuff like that, but you know he was Wahoo McDaniel, the former New York Jet, you know the guy who would fucking chop your fucking head off. And he uh, he actually went both ways too because he played heel Whoa, and he played David. What? what? He, he oh was. Oh my god! <laughs> wahoo! No wonder he was called Wahoo. He would be a heel or babyface, where a lot oh, of times. Oh, oh, okay. A lot of times the stereotypes wouldn't go heel very often. You know, he was stealing a Tyler Breeze gimmick. I don't know. Yeah, but what about Jack Briscoe? Jack Briscoe was half Native American, but they never played it up. Well, they played it up, but he wasn't. He never portrayed a character as Native American, though. And they they would say like, "Oh, he's a redskin from Oklahoma." A lot, handsome, handsome Native. You know, handsome. they would call him a savage sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like the heels would call him a savage, but well, yeah, he was. But he was NWA World Champion though, and it was always he wasn't portrayed as a you know serial. He wasn't a stereotype. He would just happen to be Native American, which probably that's probably the way to go, to be honest. Like Piper. Well, if Piper example, Piper no. was a heel that was just happened to be Scottish. He wouldn't play a foreign menace like a Nikita Cola. Yeah. Nowadays, if you have someone like Ginger Mahal come out, who's Canadian, <laughs> but also Indian, and he plays up that background, they have the dancers come out and all this stuff. If a heel wrestler, if he if he was facing someone, right, and let's say they were a heel, and they made a Bollywood spoof <laughs> dance number to make fun of him, would that be too much, or would that be fantastically entertaining? I think that would be awesome. The only thing I would do is I wouldn't, like, they couldn't darken their skin. Right. They couldn't wear, like, 
the equivalent to blackface, right? Right. But if you got a bunch of, I would just hire, I would get some Bollywood stars to come out, like well known ones too, and have them do it. Like, well, we don't. It's it's called the reverse heat, and people fuck it up. For that to work, it would be you would have the you have to have the the Indian people reject gender. That's kind of the point, right? Yeah. You don't want him. It makes no sense for him, and that's why they're fucking up. And they're pandering to have Jinder as a heel in India. He's not going to get any fucking heat. Right. So we have to do it. What I would do is have someone, like, have him get in a feud with a Bollywood star or a big celebrity over in India. Maybe a, even a Twitter war to make sure he maintains his heat. Yeah. And it's like, we don't endorse him. We don't endorse him. And it's like Fuji, right? Fuji was supposed to be, like, a Japanese villain, but it, shit, World War II was a fucking 30 years prior. Right. But no one gave a shit. It wasn't like the Japanese people were like, oh, we endorsed Mr. Fuji. They didn't endorse Mr. Fuji. But they don't under, like, some of these concepts, I don't know, they're losing their fucking minds over there in terms of how they book. And I think we, we look at racism wrestling. I made this, this point before. Wrestling uses a ton of stereotypes, but they're weirdly progressive in the same manner. And what I mean by that is that when you look at percentages of people in the United States, so we'll, we'll use African American and, and Caucasian. What's the split on that? You think seventy thirty, probably less eighty twenty? Yeah. All right. So when we look at the, we look at the landscape of professional wrestling, say it's eighty twenty. Okay. You think professional wrestling is eighty twenty, Caucasian versus African American? Hmm. If not, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. I'd say it's pretty close. So it, it's a fair representation of. Of the United States. Now, again, when you go to Japan, obviously you're going to have more Japanese wrestlers than American wrestlers. You go to Mexico, same difference, right? Now, when we take a look at African-American wrestlers in top positions, has it been 80-20? It's probably more like 90-10. Yeah. To be honest, it's probably a little bit less than the, what the landscape would dictate. But in professional wrestling, it's a little bit more different. So you have a great talent like Butch Reed. Are you going to push him above Ric Flair? Probably not. You have a talent like the Junkyard Dog, who was in that promotion in Mid South. He was the top guy, had the belt yep. the whole nine. I mean, you're not gonna push. A, are you gonna push a Jim Duggan over a JYD? No, probably not. No. But when when JYD went to WWF, are you gonna push a JYD over Hulk Hogan? Probably not. Well, I think they also too. I think what you do is it depends how you use someone. Like depending how, you know, like, like for example, how many guys have come over from one promotion back in the day. And just sputtered, yeah. You know, like, like even Shinsuke Nakamura. Like, I look at him like, even from the NXT to main roster's position, right? You know, and it's just there's been a lot of guys like that from NXT that haven't really had translation of uh, well with the audiences. Well, you look at Apollo Cruz right now; they pulled him out way too early. Yeah, I, he I, didn't I, get an opportunity to develop his character whatsoever. Yeah, but we look we look at African American world champions, and you guys know the list. Um, you make sure make sure you have Sailor Art Thomas to that list, and uh, Bobo Brazil technically. There's debate on the true first black heavyweight champion, but some say Art Thomas, some say Bobo Brazil, and then others go directly to Ron Simmons. Even when we look at Latino talent, like Rey Mysterio, huge, right? Transcended, right? Yeah. Where you have a guy like La Parker, who's fantastic, who didn't transcend. You had Conan, who was you know upper mid card at the very least, probably not a main event talent, but I don't think he was held that held back because of his race. And there's no evidence that I've seen that would dictate that a particular performer was ever held back by their race. I've I just I just I haven't. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I just don't see any evidence of it. Like if someone could provide me some like legitimate proof. Like, was Ahmed Johnson held back because of his race? Or was it the fact that he couldn't talk and he sounded like... Blah, 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 blah. Right. Ron oh. Simmons was elevated to the World Heavyweight Championship. And you want to say, oh, he didn't really do anything in WWF. You know, not for nothing, he got a main event. He got main events with Steve Austin. Yeah. He didn't win. But he was always in high regard. Was Kamala offensive? I remember when he debuted. Because I have a tape called Mad Men Maniacs and Lunatics, something like that. Yeah. And it was like a best of like continental wrestling, and it had the debut of Kamala, the deepest, darkest, Africa. <laughs> it's like, oh fuck. Kamala uh, probably was a little offensive, but I still love Kamala. He was awesome. He was awesome, slapping the belly. Yeah, and he got main events 
main events with Hulk Hogan. You know I mean, obviously not gonna put the belt on him, but damn, he main evented everywhere he went. So okay, but with Brazil, main evented everywhere he went. Big feud with the Sheik. Okay, so there's no there's no perceived racism there. Bad News Brown main events with both Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. Okay, nothing there either. Yeah, so I'm just trying to figure out like, oh, someone was grossly underutilized because you know they're, of their race, and I have not seen it. I mean, you want to say Shelton Benjamin, but are you pushing Shelton Benjamin over John Cena? How about Mabel? Mabel got a main event at fucking SummerSlam. Mabel dead, right? Dead, yeah. You ever heard the story with Teddy Long? Terry Long used to give uh, Mabel his Viagra. He liked to sit in the locker room just fucking hard. It's that serious. <laughs> That's a true story. He just like just, he liked to be hard all the time. Fuck, good for Is you. That a problem though, after four hours. <clears throat> I heard you supposed to take a match and burn your wrist. Now I'm not talking about personal experience. I just heard that was the case. So that helps. Yeah, yeah. I saw that somewhere in a movie. I think. <laughs> then it must be true. I mean, the only, the, only, the only thing I could see is maybe Thunderbolt Patterson. Thunderbolt Patterson was notorious of being... He's like a Brody, where he's hard to work with. So maybe Thunderbolt Patterson, possibly. Was Virgil racist? The concept of Virgil? Virgil is the butler slash money body, man or whatever. The body, the body, it was essentially a bodyguard. That's right, bodyguard. Yeah. Virgil, pay the man. Is that borderline racist? Probably not, because it's almost double reverse racism. Because Ted DiBiase does not value white people more because if Ted DiBiase wanted the best in any everything and if Ted DiBiase was racist, wouldn't he want to buy a white person? Uh, right? I don't know. That's triple reverse racism? That's a gimmick they never they should have brought back. Like really they dropped the ball on that. Well when they had it with Ted Jr., yeah. When I submitted my writing sample to for my uh application or whatever's uh, you know, for WWE. Yeah. My writing sample was an idea of um this guy coming out and being DiBiase's nephew was way before Ted DiBiase. And the idea is his father gives him permission to like team up with one guy and it's the undertaker. <laughs> and of course he's like wealthy, but he's like kind of a dork and like screws up everything. So oh, you mean Jim Cornette. What's that? That's Jim Cornette. Well, he, yeah. In a way, that's how, that's how Cornette debuted. Oh, Same concept. Really? Yeah. So Cornette debuted because his mother, you know, his mother was going to buy him wrestlers. So, like, that's when, like, Dutch Mantel and Sherry Martel and, uh, and that kind of stuff. Because, you know, you know, mommy's going to buy me all the wrestlers that I wanted was the oh, concept. Well, this was just the, the way it was set up was that making his debut. So his uncle, Million Dollar Man, gave him, you know, some money. So he comes out, but he's, he's a wrestler, but he screws up a lot. But then... He pairs up with Undertaker as kind of a gag, but they actually end up being good. Hmm. And, of course, he starts getting better, and then, of course, he tries to control the Undertaker and gets into a few of them. A whole nine yards. Nice. Because what I did is I included kind of like a, a six-month perspective of where it could go, but I wasn't sure what they wanted for a writing sample, so I just was like, here you go. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, they don't, they don't really make that clear, do they? No. It, like, if you're writing TV, like, you got to figure out how to write TV, and you have to know, like, stuff like... In an hour program, there's 47 minutes of 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 in ring of, of TV time because you have commercials, and it's six segments. So every hour of wrestling is six segments long, and then you got to time out your segments, and then you got to put in commercial breaks. Still trying to get someone to teach me how to write TV. So <laughs> Bruce Pritchard, if you're listening, Jim Cornette, Dutch Mantel, somebody, J.J. Dillon. Um, I think that's an invaluable skill. And not that I'm ever going to become a, a, a writer for the WWE. I just want to learn how to write television. Just make me a better fan. Um, because there's formats. Like, there's TV formats that they have. So, yeah, six segments an hour. I didn't even know that. I found that out yesterday, actually. That there was six segments in an hour. Three matches and three promos or whatever, but depending on the time. But, yeah, that's... Uh... That's completely insane. So racism wrestling. We're not saying that we want more racism in wrestling. All we're saying is that we want more heat. And would it be through promos or violence or what have you? That's what we're looking for. So, Matt, tell me about uh, your new favorite wrestler. <laughs> the progressive liberal, Dan Richardson, I believe the name is. Yeah, he's going with a gimmick of heat, if you will, in the South, where he goes into 
areas that are very pro-Trump, wears a shirt with Hillary Clinton's pictures all over it. He has dumped Trump on his trunks, and he has, you know, a censor symbol on image of an elephant, you know, in Trump's face. And he riles up the crowd. I think my favorite was he tried to get a crowd to sign a petition to give their guns away. <laughs> uh, one was he went to a cold place and was like, you know, there's a good article about him, but I've read about this about him too. And he's kind of getting more and more attention. And it's, it's a thing that, you know, it's funny for all of the WWE's and other wrestling promoters, you know, used to be really finger on the pulse of what's going on and making wrestlers are kind of like, you know, in the moment. Sergeant Slaughter turning heel right. during the Iraq war. And did do, you you think, know, do you think that's too much heat for them? They're not going to want to take it. For, for uh, a crowd being like politically, yeah, I, that's just stupid on their part. Why wouldn't you take that heat? Use that heat. It's there. We're just talking about the racial part, side of things. Use the heat of people getting so hate, uh, you know, heated about things. You know, have Russell come out and say, you know, he wants to take their health care. <laughs> you know, like there's ways you can do it. But if they're afraid of getting heat, then they're afraid of responding with an uh, audience that cares. And then on the other side of the aisle, you have the. Uh... Um, Sam Adonis, who does the pro-Trump gimmick in Mexico, which is to me is insane. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's been getting a little, a little bit of buzz too. If any promoters were smart, they would put them in the ring together. I would actually probably make them a tag team. Yeah, and have them bicker back and forth because that'd be fucking hilarious. Yes, but I think you know, there's always you know, due to the fact that the WWE is publicly traded. Like, if Vince still, like, owned it, owned it, like, privately, he'd probably do that in a fucking heartbeat. He's done shit like that before. There's nothing new. But the fact that they're stockholders now, that might be a little bit too difficult to fucking swallow on their part. Not for me. I'm a stockholder. I have, like, two two shares somewhere. Um, <laughs> not enough to get me on the conference call, though. Oh, man. Yeah, it sucks. But I like new innovative stuff. I like new innovative gimmicks. I like stuff that would draw heat. Like when Jeff Jarrett do, threw tortillas in the crowd at Triple Mania, <laughs> as a Hispanic male, was not offended. I thought that was hilarious. You know what I mean? So, again, I, I guess to wrap this show up, I mean, stop being offended by shit. Don't be stupid. Well, as a fan, your job is to be offended thing your your course of action isn't to sit there turn around and then write angry emails it's to cheer on the other guy to beat his ass yeah that's what it's about yeah just stop being douche stop no just stop watching wrestling if you're gonna sit here and you'll be able to tweet shenanigans you're gonna write in the comics comment section if you're gonna be like i'm so mad it's just there's this fake outrage that's on social media that everyone has to be outraged about everything all the time there's real things to be outraged about in this world and let's talk about that stuff. But if you're going to be outraged by a movie or, or music or, or, or wrestling to that degree, you have psychological issues. Right. And you really just need to stop watching. It's just not for you because you, you clearly do not understand. Like that would be like somebody running to a show being, I think this character in Breaking Bad is a bad reflection of blah, blah, blah. And if I was Vince, that's what I would say. I'd be like, if you don't like it, fucking stop watching. Fuck right. off. Do you really want those fans? Do you really want even their money? It's probably tainted with some sort of fucking brain disease because they're so fucking stupid. So, guys, we are rapidly running out of time. Join us next week when we talk about EMLL, which is the forerunner to CMML. As we go down to Mexico, main event of that show will be Blue Demon taking on Harley Race for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. Nice. Now, guys, now guys, since the they took down the WWE 2K16 servers, I guess to make room for for 2K18, I am unable to download more creative wrestlers. I wanted to have more luchadors on this show, like El Connect uh, and, and Doctor Wagner Jr. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not unable to download any more, so I can only use the wrestlers that I have currently. So you'll see probably a lot more American wrestlers on the show that you probably that you would see normally if I was you know booking. But I think it's gonna be a fun show. Uh, we're gonna talk about EMML and, and and how it's the more traditional base uh, Lucha Libre than AAA, and we'll kind of go over the history of it and you know what they're doing now. 
Just shout out to all our friends in Mexico since we're doing a Mex uh, lucha a lucha type show next week. That uh, you know, they just got hit with that giant earthquake. And again, guys, if you have any extra funds, we've had a lot of natural disasters. Would it be Houston, Florida, Puerto Rico, Mexico? Please, if you have a spare dollar to please donate to the appropriate uh, charities that are out there. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot, but you know, if we all give a little, we can all can make a difference together. As well, you keep that in mind. So, for Matt Riley.